Running is one of the most common, cheapest, and flexible activities anyone can really do. All you need to do is get some decent running shoes, go outside, and pick any environment that you want. If you want to do it on the road, you can do it on the road. If you want to do it on the hills, you can do that too. Or you could even do it in a pool. Well, maybe not that. Regardless of what type of running that you do, you're going to suck a lot. And how do I know this? Because I was in the exact same position you were in a few months ago. So in this video, I want to talk about the tips and tricks of what I've learned to become a better runner. So let's get right into it. All right, so one of the first lessons that I wish I knew as a beginner runner is to stop drinking water. This might sound really counterintuitive, but hear me out. When you are exercising so much more now, whether you're prepping for 5K, a 10K, a half marathon, or a marathon, you're gonna be drinking a lot of water. And that is a good step to have. I'm not actually bagging on that. But the one thing that a lot of people mess up on is that they don't put electrolytes in their water. If you don't know what electrolytes are, you're gonna need them, especially when you're a runner. There are five different types, uh, at least the main ones. There are sodium, there's potassium, there's calcium, magnesium, and chloride. There's also like phosphate and bicarbonate, but let's focus on those five for now. For those five, those mainly help you contract and relax your muscles. If you have too much of one, it might cause you to start cramping. If you don't have enough of one, it will still cause you to cramp a lot. So you need to have a balance of each. So when you start being able to run longer distances or even at harder paces, you're gonna need a lot more electrolytes. So I recommend getting any electrolyte powder that has, I would say, at least a minimum of 500 milligrams of sodium. But this is really dependent on your activity levels and how hard you're going. For me, I need the 500 milligrams because I'm starting to go faster and faster on my paces and for my distance. If you're just starting out, you could probably get something lower, like 300 or, or even 100, depending on how far you really wanna go running, pun intended. On top of sodium, the other two main ones that I recommend finding in your electrolyte powder would be potassium and magnesium because that is way harder to get in our food because of the soil. So I would recommend finding something that's also high in potassium and magnesium because of that reason. Now that you have those three things in mind, there's probably one thing that you will probably not buy anymore when you start running, and that is, sports drinks. This sounds really counterintuitive when you first see it, but if you look at most of the labels on these sports drinks, such as like Gatorade or Powerade, they have almost no electrolytes compared to what you actually need. And the stuff that they actually do give you, which is carbs, that's really helpful when you're needing that quick energy. It sucks because it's mainly added sugar, which you do not need at all. It is not good for you. So if you get something more like coconut water, that will have more electrolytes than your orange slushy Gatorade drink. Those taste amazing, but until you start running, it's gonna taste very bad after with all the cramps. So it's much less about not drinking water, but rather more of what you put in your water. All right, so the second tip that I wish I knew as a beginner runner is implementing a rule that I now call the rule of fours. So hear me out on this one. When you start running, 20, 30, 40, even 50 miles a week, your muscles are gonna get very tight, very fast if you do not stretch, whether this is before or after. But in this context, I'm focusing on the after. Stretching after your workouts is so important because not only are they tense and need to be released, it also helps you with increased blood flow as well as injury prevention and also having that full range of motion. So for the rule of fours, how does this come into play? What I started doing after all my workouts for at least four minutes, I stretch four different parts of my body after when I work out. Specifically, doing different parts of your legs, such as stretching your quads, your hamstrings, your glutes, and also your hips. This is where I started and it's definitely helped me cramp less in my journey. Hey guys, this is me from the future. Just want to say if you're getting any value out of this video so far, make sure that you guys hit the subscribe button down below. It only takes a second and means the world to me. But yeah, thank you guys so much and back to the video. So the third lesson that I wish I knew as a beginner runner was getting enough data. And let me tell you a quick story about this. When I first started getting into strength training, 
I focused a lot on, well, everything. I would start tracking how many sets I was doing, how many reps I was doing in those sets, what was my rest time, how often would I go to the gym, what was I eating before and after. And because of this, I was able to skyrocket my strength and performance by a long shot. But when I got into running, I didn't really think of anything at all. All I just thought was just run, which is not the best thing to do uh, when you actually want to get better as a runner. So what do you actually track as a new runner? For me, what I started doing was just tracking the three main things, and that would be my heart rate, my distance, and my pace. For me to track these accurately, I decided to invest into a watch and I personally love using Garmin. They do not sponsor this video. I just really like using them. I got this watch called the Phoenix 6 Pro Solar and I've been using it ever since. Still very reliable as a watch. And then I also decided to invest into a chest strap monitor that would track my heart rate. It's called the HRM Pro Plus, also by Garmin and I'll have some links below just for you guys to check them out. Garmin also has a really handy dashboard that can help you track anything else such as like your cadence, your vertical oscillation, your elevation, and so much more. But if you don't really wanna invest into this, that's totally fine. You can also invest into another app such as like Strava, which I've used personally. I plan on making a video about that soon of my thoughts of me using it for about the past year and a half using premium. But if you don't even want to use premium, you can also use something like RunKeeper, which is also a very reliable app. So for the fourth tip that I wish I knew when I first started running was combining both strength training and running. And this might sound a little counterintuitive at first, but it's very important to actually have strength training when you're a beginner runner, because if you only run and not get stronger as a runner, it's gonna backfire really hard. Even though I first did strength training, I really needed to cater it to running specifically. So what helped me out was focusing on single leg exercises that helped me with my posture, my mobility and power, such as doing step ups, Bulgarian split squats, single leg deadlifts, even glute raises. And then also I focused on working out my core more because you need that balance as a runner and that comes from the abs. So I started doing hanging leg rests, which, oh my gosh, it helped so much in my journey. Tip number five that I wish I knew as a beginner runner was focusing on breathing technique. And this is super easy to overlook because when you're running however many miles, whether that's three, four, five, or 10, you, all you really wanna do is just finish the run because you might be exhausted or super tired. And that is so relatable because I had that a lot when I was running my longer distance, especially my longer runs. If you choose not to breathe properly, that's gonna put a lot of unnecessary stress on the body. So something that fixed my issue was focusing on a technique that I found out called rhythmic breathing. And rhythmic breathing is, depending on a certain distance or how hard you're going, you wanna focus on breathing at that certain pace. So like, let's say I'm running at a very easy pace. I would might breathe in for four steps and then breathe out for four steps, which can be a really good pace to keep at because you're actually breathing more often, which is really good. But uh, let's say if you're going harder on like, let's say a tempo run, critical velocity run, you're gonna need to maybe cut that down a little bit less. So what helped me was is if I'm doing a harder run, I might breathe in for two to three steps and then breathe out for like one to two steps. One of the ways that I started incorporating this into my training was actually using a treadmill. This might sound weird at first because a lot of people don't like using treadmills, but if you start using the treadmill, it can be your friend rather than your foe. And here's what I mean by this. When you're outside, typically, depending, especially if you're doing trail running, because I love trail running, you're not focusing on your breathing most of the time. You're focusing on not falling from all the rocks or the obstacles in your way or even if you're just regularly running out on the road you might be thinking of cars or let's say the weather but if you're on a treadmill it's on an even temperature and on an even floor and you can easily incorporate this breathing technique when you're running at a steady pace so those are the five lessons that i wish i knew as a beginner runner and if you guys are interested in this type of content in the future i'm going to be talking more in depth about these apps as well as exercises and the products that I use. So if you guys like that, make sure you subscribe down below and I will see y'all in the future. Take care guys.